I'm your host, Olivia Ladd, a music journalist in Nashville, Tennessee. The premise of this podcast is I find a friend, musician, or other journalist in the Nashville music scene, and we discuss the history, discography, art, and influences surrounding our favorite cult bands. Bandsplainer is part of the We Own This Town network of podcasts based in Nashville. You can find more information at weownthistown.net. Bandsplainer is available for streaming on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, and pretty much anywhere you find your favorite podcasts. To keep up with the latest, follow Bandsplainer on Twitter at Bandsplainer. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Bandsplainer, the podcast where we explain bands. Today, our guest is Lori Liebig, and our topic is Brandy Carlisle slash Women in Country Continued, uh, with a little bit more focus on sort of like awards and music festivals. So this episode is sort of the second part to the Women in Country mini-sode that we put out a couple weeks ago. That was the first mini-sode, and we're going to continue doing those between episodes about artists or bands like we've been doing. So you can go ahead and introduce yourself and tell people what you do in Nashville. <laughs> Hello, I am Lori. <laughs> I I do many things in Nashville. I am a music journalist. I currently mostly write for The Boot, the Nashville scene. I've written for NPR Music and Rolling Stone Country a few times. Uh, I'm also a publicist. And what else do I do? I do everything. (laughs) Everything. (laughs) Um, Yeah, Lori is one of my favorite people in Nashville. And she gave me my first, like, country writing job. I had done some other stuff in country, but... Uh, she used to be the editor of Wide Open Country, and now we're like coworkers, sort of, no, and friends. It's more fun. importantly, yes, so, yeah. most importantly. <laughs> um, cool. So, if you listened to the episode a couple weeks ago, it uh, I tried to make it mini and short, but these episodes are usually really long. So, like a forty-minute episode was short for me, but there was a lot of information packed in there. I think we kind of originally planned to put that information in this podcast and I realized it would kind of just be better to have it all laid out before and then we can kind of talk about sort of other go deeper I guess in this episode. So Brandy Carlisle the reason I kind of picked her to talk about is I feel like not only is she sort of in her prime right now in country music slash like in general she's a really great figurehead for like someone actually solving a lot of the issues going on or making an effort, making like a tangible effort to fix things and has a lot of projects going on at once that are like an antidote to all of the men in country that aren't doing great things, (laughs) you could say. Um, Yeah, so... We're kind of going to go over, like, Brandy Carlyle's beginnings, but this is, I was kind of talking about this earlier, this is, like, the first episode I think I've ever done where the artist is, like, currently in their prime. Like, pretty much the only other artist we've done that's, like, a current artist was the Avid Brothers, but if you listen to that episode, in my opinion, their their prime is a past, sadly. (laughs) So, uh, this is interesting because instead of, like, the history, we're gonna dig more into, like, really the past, like, two, three years here and, like, discuss all of that, and, uh, I'm glad to have Lori here to discuss it because she's, like, a big, uh, big writer player in the women in country issue which we talked about last time and in the google doc i made with sources for that podcast which you can still find if you reach out to me or go on twitter a few of her articles were in it so like i think we're gonna have a good discussion here so brandy carlisle got her start in seattle and she was a teenager she ended up kind of like dropping out of high school and playing these like dive bar shows in Washington had this incredible work ethic though where she was like actually getting people's like phone numbers getting them to come to her show she's like a she's a really incredible person I think uh and you can kind of see that in the very beginning so uh when she was playing these like shows as a like very young person she met her two most like consistent collaborators the Hansroth twins Phil and Tim 
and they are to this day in her band and um, have really shaped her sound as an artist, even though it's had its ebb and flows between albums. They're kind of just as much a part of her act as she is, which is important to note. So she put out her debut album, self-titled, in 2005, and obviously when you put out your debut album, not everyone's paying a ton of attention, but Brandi Carlo kind of came to be known as Brandi Carlo in 2007, with the story, which is a fantastic, amazing, fantastic <laughs> album. Um, yeah, so it got like a lot of critical acclaim. There's a lot of good songs on here, and I think so. Her most recent album is probably her most like most critically acclaimed and all mm-hmm. that. But this one, it's definitely the roots of all that sound on it—the like baroque strings in the back yeah. and the ballads and the writing and. She's a very, like, empathetic and honest songwriter, and you can really see that in these songs. It was actually so good that 10 years after it came out, it I believe it went platinum, I don't remember when, but 10 years after it came out, there was a covers album done of it, and all the money was donated, and Dolly Parton and Chris Christopherson covered her songs. Like, <laughs> if... if- Dolly Parton and Chris Christopherson are covering your songs. You're probably doing something right, I would say. Yeah, that's insane. (laughs) Like, like, when I first found the album, I was like, oh, like, she did all these covers of these people. I was like, oh, my God, no, they're doing covers of her. (laughs) Like, what? Um, And it also had, like, Anderson East, Margot Price, Pearl Jam, Washington State represent. Yeah. um, Adele, Indigo Girls, all these people. It's crazy. Like, super cool. Yeah. And then she put out a couple records in in between the, like, main ones I want to talk about, but Give Up the Ghost in 2009 and Bear Creek in 2012. And in these, she was definitely experimenting a little more. There was a little R&B and, like, mm-hmm. pop and all that. But, like, her voice, I think, is the most consistent, like, uh, yeah. I don't know how to describe it, angelic, perfect. All yeah, of all of those things. <laughs> like, it's, like, I, don't, I hate when people say, like, your voice is so pure, but I feel like that's one of those words that actually sums up her voice. There's just something about it that it's like, you can't replicate it. You know what no, I mean? No, yeah. I mean, it seems like it's effortless every yeah. time I hear her singing, like just every note and it, it's amazing. And mm-hmm. uh, so I think during 2012, from all the interviews I've read, was kind of when she became more confident as like an artist. And a lot of that has to do with, I think, coming out as gay like as a lesbian publicly which I'm sure it wasn't like a huge secret I'm not positive how that all happened it was during an interview but she met her wife and like I think that's always been part of her narrative but to kind of be able to as anyone who's gone through that knows kind of display that publicly kind of changes how you approach art and life after that so it's kind of an interesting thing to think about and then in 2015 she released the fire watcher's daughter which is when I got into her. I was in college, and Mm -hmm. it was... I was at Bonnaroo in 2015. Um, Bonnaroo, man. Um, And (laughs) That's all you got to say. It it was rough. I was very (laughs) exhausted. It was Sunday, and I knew Robert Plant was, like, playing on the main stage, and I was, like, into Led Zeppelin when I was younger. So Mm -hmm. I was like, I'd love to see Robert Plant live. I also love his stuff with Allison Krauss. Yeah. Americana. Yeah. Mm And um, (laughs) so I was like, okay, I'm going to get the early like lay down in the grass and chill and then there's like this person who's playing before him brandy carlisle had never met her based on the crowd of like older women and like these cool lesbians all around me i was like i think this is my kind of music like i'm gonna (laughs) like this and uh i did it was so good i like stood up and like went to the front i like cried a little bit Mm -hmm. and ever since then i have been a fan forever it's great yeah yeah speaking of bonnaroo i went to bonnaroo this year to see Brandy. Oh, yeah, I forgot. And, that, that's the only year I haven't been in the uh, past few years. This was my first year. I'd never gone to Bonnaroo before, and I was like, before I turn 30, I should go to Bonnaroo <laughs> yeah, in my 20s. That's the time I to feel do. like that's like a religious experience yeah. you have to do. But yeah, she played, it was like a mid afternoon set, and it was on the biggest stage. And it was like, I had seen her before, but something about it, it was just like magical. And she was having an amazing time. And there were, I don't know how many thousands of people watching her. It was just great. (laughs) Yeah, she's so good. I've seen her live a few times, which I'm Mm -hmm. sure I'll, like, remember as we go on with the conversation. But, like, 
there's nothing i mean i think we've like talked about this before there's like nothing that compares to like seeing brandy carlyle live like i think like seeing her live, like over time also like i've seen her after i've listened to all her discography Mm -hmm. and you know like read about her and followed her and stuff like seeing her live is like there's just there's not a lot of artists that do what she does it's it's so hard to like put into words all of this but like she's so (laughs) like her voice is so powerful Mm -hmm. and her presence and uh oh i don't know she's she's so fantastic i think Mm -hmm. she's like undoubtedly one of the most important artists of our like generation yeah because she's like not only country but she crosses so many lines of like how many people can like relate to what she's singing about like she she's incredible and like i i think she's finally kind of getting that credit Mm -hmm. like obviously it takes like years to get your career going but like i just hope like like there are so many times I've been at a bar and after a few beers been like Brandy Carlo is the most important artist of our generation. Yes. Like she really is. No, she's great. I yeah, I feel like she's she has the qualities of like a Dolly Parton or a Chris Christopherson or someone like that where it's just a their voice just does something that you can't really define until you hear it and the it's more of an experience listening to them than anything. And yeah, and just her songwriting is so good. You can't... Yeah, you it's can't. more than, I think... Because the beauty of country music or Americana or roots or folk or whatever, I would consider mm-hmm. her maybe, like, folk rock-ish yeah. sort of, is, is like, the storytelling aspect. Mm-hmm. But hers is more than just, like, being vulnerable or, like, yeah. turning this, like, vulnerability into art. It's, like, she's, like, singing, like, for someone. Yeah. Like, you listen to the song and you know you can relate to it and you know probably like hundreds of other people thousands of other people can relate to it and I think she has this I think once she opened up as a person and put mm-hmm. herself out there like that came to her music and it's it's just like absolutely beautiful um yeah. and she's also a huge fan of Elton John and they're actually like friends now That's which so like cool makes me want to cry I love that <laughs> I That's like my favorite thing um and my favorite was I think it was GQ I'll edit that out if it's wrong she did like a photo shoot where she was dressed up as Elton John. Oh yes, and she looked. It looked so good. It was amazing. I want to like hang it up on my wall or something. <laughs> it was great. Um, I know. It was very cool though. She's like friends with Elton John, but I feel like she has a lot of these aspects of like a glam rock sensibility almost. Mm-hmm. Like she's so excited when she's yes. on the stage, and it's like a. She's always wearing like some cool tux sort of thing. Like yes. she's just like the style. Her the outfits whole thing. are always on point. Oh my I, God. Every time yeah. I see her, I'm just like, can I have your closet? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I once so saw good. her wearing like a like a. It was just like a black, very well tailored suit, but it was yeah. like a leather cummerbund, and I was like, oh my god, I can't <laughs> handle this. Like, I can't be in this room right now. I know. Um, it was beautiful. <laughs> um, but yeah, she like has the whole package and I think like she always kind of wanted to be like this rocker, but like her, it's, it's such a, like a duality. Like mm-hmm. her music is so like sensitive and like emotionally intelligent. And then she has this like swagger or whatever. And yeah. so I think she does like Elton John being her influence makes like so much sense, even though their music doesn't sound oh, like yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they had their attitudes are perfectly aligned it's just like especially if you compare how they are live it's and i urge anyone listening to just go see brandy carlisle yeah, literally, live. if anything <laughs> if you get anything from this podcast please buy a ticket and go see brandy carlisle yes. and then tell me how it was yes like, i want to know and then find both of us yes. and we will all talk about it yes. <laughs> for like three hours yeah. um but yeah they both have this energy and swagger is a good word for it and it, that it's so hard to find and it's one of those things where when you watch it you feel like you're a part of something yeah yeah you feel it I mean it's like oh man I've like seen her uh, most of the time I've seen her it's been like at country music events where she's doing a song or two or something Mm -hmm. but I think I've cried almost every oh yeah time like it (laughs) it just pulls you in it's like a gravitational force it's amazing yes um yeah so yeah 2015 firewatcher's daughter there's also an Aver brothers cover murder in the city on that record it's a closing track oh yeah yeah and i love a cover as a closing track like kelsey wadden did that on a yes. record last year i just I, so that's good. a power move yeah i love it, <laughs> it and uh move. that's such a beautiful song and to hear her sing it with her voice is like um 
Very touching. Very mm-hmm. touching. Yeah. So, Brandy Carlisle has supported, like, between all these records, she supported really cool people on tour. She's, like, Tori Amos, like, country artists, rock artists. Like, she's so versatile. Mm-hmm. Amazing. To the peak of Brandy Carlisle's career, <laughs> and we're opening the floodgates on what may become a very long discussion. <laughs> we're going to be here a while. <laughs> so, in 2018, Brandy Carlisle released By the Way I Forgive You, which is, like, a perfect album it's so good Done. <laughs> yes um period. it was produced by dave cobb and shooter jennings and dave cobb if you listen to this kind of music you know is like the americana producer now he's done like mara morris lily may everyone's record brent he cobb. like does it yeah brent cobb that's mm-hmm. like one of the most famous ones um yeah, he, do, he, like, posts up in RCA Studio A. He works on these records, and he just has, like, a little magic touch. And then Shooter Jennings is a uh, cool, which before I forget, I'm getting ahead of myself here, mm-hmm. but Shooter Jennings, I was going to mention this, is, uh, I mean, he's, like, outlaw country. His dad is Waylon well, you know, yeah. Jennings, like, of course. <laughs> it's hard but not to I be. think Brandy Carlisle <laughs> is, like, kind of the definition of an outlaw by, like, yes. all the things we were talking about, like, personality and all that. And we'll get into, like more of the not necessarily political but like the the movements and things she does i think are like mm-hmm. outlaw as hell like way more outlaw than yes. just some dude wearing a cowboy hat and saying he's an outlaw country <laughs> artist like it's true yeah so by the way i forgive you is a beautiful album it won several grammys it won best americana album the song the joke won best american roots song best american roots performance it won her the americana awards artist of the year it's it's like fantastic and we can yeah. just talk about yeah this <laughs> i mean i i was lucky that i was invited to this performance at studio a and it had dave cobb was there and she was there with the twins and they were just like sitting down on stools with their instruments and they talked about you know the record and doing it together and then they played and I just remember sitting there just like slowly yeah. sobbing <laughs> and being Crazy. like oh my god what's happening I yeah I don't think I think for a long time this record people will look back and be like that was an important and almost perfect album Oh, yeah, I think so. And it's, like, I think I know in, like, 2016 there was, like, the, it's kind of a joke now where it was, like, our, like, art and music is going to be so good. And then we got, like, Kathy Griffin and all this (laughs) shit, you know. And, and, but this, like, she, I read an interview somewhere, uh, it was in Rolling Stone with Marissa Moss, actually. Um, and she was talking about, like, the 2016 election. It happened. She's, like, crying in the airport. And mm-hmm. she was like, what we need is debilitating empathy. And I was like, that is – I get chills when I say it. Like, that's beautiful. That's what this album is. Yeah. It's, it's I- protest art in a way that is not, like, talking to some big man in charge. Mm-hmm. It's, like, talking to the people affected by this stuff. And it's – yeah beautiful um the song the joke which won two of the grammys is so good oh my god it is so good it's (laughs) so good good song yeah when she hits the high note it's like about like misfits it's about like a like a gay kid in school getting bullied a girl Mm -hmm. who like feels like the world is against her because it's like catered to men it's like this beautiful like uh like a misfit anthem for yeah. our generation like it's it's perfect and it sounds beautiful the piano like it yeah i was listening to it on the way here and, like literally we had to turn it off because i was like i'm gonna like cry i know <laughs> like, it's it's she is able to channel emotion so well like especially in that song if you're listening to it and you're feeling like you are not a normal person or you're an outcast or you're just like feeling like you don't fit somewhere that song will make you cry within seconds oh, yeah. especially when she hits that high note but oh my god that it's perfect <laughs> it's just, perfect, effort, yeah. just like an effortless little like yeah. lift into it it's amazing yeah and i think like everyone's been there at mm-hmm. some point in their life but to like put 
like it, I like what you said about channeling emotion because I think she it's easy like I love I love sad songs like it's yeah. probably my favorite type of songs I love love songs like other favorite type of songs but like to channel this like in between like an experience mm-hmm. into a song is such yeah. a skill like and she has it like that's that's her thing it's amazing I, yeah she there's so many like human complexities that I feel like she somehow can vocalize both through her lyrics but also through her performance like you can feel the tension or the sadness or the confusion or the happiness and I mean usually humans are feeling a mix of all of those things and like humor too yeah I think she like always like injects just enough yeah it's it's so smart the way she does that I don't know how she does it but she does it so well I think it's just who she is as a person is like Mm -hmm. uh I mean, I was reading this thing the other day. I think anyone who is creative feels absolutely insane sometimes. Oh, yeah. I was reading (laughs) reading this thing the other day that was, like, how, like, writers, like, songwriter and, like, creative writers, like, brains actually work differently. And it was, like, like, a funny part of it was it said that writers are in, like, the top, like, they showcase like the top 50 percent of like psychopathic tendencies but the reason they're good at writing because they also like test as more like sane than it's like basically the duality of like being a creative person Uh uh-huh totally if that makes sense i was reading all these articles about it but i think she showcases like she's like contradictory in a way Mm -hmm. that like she makes it like harmonic in her life she's like grew up in washington in the woods and loves to go fishing and ride on her four-wheeler and all this stuff But she's, like, a mother and has, like, this traditional, like, household. She's also, like, a rock star. Mm -hmm. She's a queer woman in America, which, just being a woman alone right now, you have to be everything Mm -hmm. to be a queer woman that's, like, outspoken and uh, and helpful to other people. You have to, like, do a lot of that. So I think, basically, she holds, like, a lot of, like, these really extreme human qualities in like one person and she's really good at vocalizing it and I'm sure that took a lot of time to do yeah I yeah yeah, she I think one of the reasons why I admire her too is because she represents all of those things so unapologetically like she has she just does it and she doesn't care if you don't accept it because she's gonna do it and that's the way I want to be and I wish more people were like that but especially in all of those spaces where she is where it's already difficult to be oh yeah any of those things she's all of those things and she just does it yeah like it's difficult to be who she is like a woman in country a queer woman in country and then also like Americana everybody's like oh well it's not really country it's not really Mm -hmm. blues or whatever like and she makes it work like she has a Grammy award winning album because she just did it because she loved doing it and she's good at doing it Mm -hmm. like which is why everyone should do everything just like get out there and create because you love it yeah um even if it drives you crazy <laughs> um yes. but yeah that album i i love i recommend listening to the whole thing all the way through like get some tissues turn the lights off yeah. like you know have a moment <laughs> but have a moment i yes. love every time i hear that song which is the opening track <laughs> and then uh the mother is about like her becoming a mother and it like it makes me cry. It's I know. So, like I'm not a mom, but it like makes me cry. And uh, any song about mothers, like Casey Musgraves, mm-hmm. like all oh, that God. stuff, makes me cry. I can't it just, listen to no, it. I can't either. <laughs> I think about my mom, and then I'm like, oh God, yeah, I can't. I know. I know. And I saw her at the Americana Awards. You were there, also. Mm-hmm. I was sitting next. Yeah, to yeah I was. Yeah. Um, she went to play a, a couple songs uh, with. Um, I don't remember who. I, if, if it was just her like a backing band or what but she was going to play the mother and she's like this is about my daughter who was born to two mothers on father's day and then like yeah. went into the song and i like cried, like cried a little oh, um because it's like beautiful also live like the way she changes up a song live to make it feel like even more like just like this like holy experience yes. it's amazing and then party of one i really like it just mm-hmm. kind of like encompasses once again like complex human emotions like, yeah it's like loneliness but a lot more there and mm-hmm. she actually re-recorded it with sam smith which i think is like super cool yes. get the pop audience in we love to see it yes so, we do love to see we, it anything she does that <laughs> is we love all to i gotta it. say yeah um 
Okay, cool. So that's like Brandy Carlisle's discography, but the past two years, or really year, like 2019 and into 2020 and stuff, she has been like, d- she's just been going for it, like full mm-hmm. force. She has done, I don't know how she has like the energy to like, I don't know. do what she does. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Um. So something, I guess we'll go into the high woman here. Yeah, yeah I think that's the next logical. I'm, I'm down. <laughs> step here. If you're a fan of Brandy Carlisle or country music, or you don't live under a rock, you probably <laughs> know who the high women are. And it's a group that Brandy sort of like. I think she kind of headed the idea with Amanda Shires, mm-hmm. and it's based off of the Highway Men, but it's the High Women. Uh, it's 2020, you know, get with it. Um, and it's <laughs> Samantha Shires, Natalie Hemby, and Mara Morris. Amanda Shires is like a fantastic Americana artist. She also plays in Jason Isbell's band. She's like a great fiddle player, like amazing fiddle player. Amazing, uh, Natalie yeah. Hemby is like a hit country songwriter who she's put out a solo album before, but I think this was like a big step for her to like yeah. put her own name out there. But she's written literally some of the best country songs you've ever heard. Yeah. And then Mara Morris is like one of my favorite country artists. She's very country pop. Super cool. Uh, her album Girl uh, will also make you cry. <laughs> yes, um, multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's like a cool group. It's a core group. And there was kind of some talk before they formed. Like, I think Amanda Shires, like, accidentally leaked some info on a radio station and the mm-hmm. internet went crazy. And I was at the Loretta Lynn, like, had her own birthday tribute because she was, like, as like last year she's like before i die like i want i don't want to you know miss that like i want to see everyone sing my songs for me while i'm here sort of thing and that was like one of the most charmed nights of my entire <laughs> life being there like so much weird like beautiful yeah. things happen i got to see so much music but one of the coolest things was the high women made their official like debut as, like not as the high women because they didn't sing their own songs but it was their debut of, of with like the full lineup so they like brought everyone out and natalie Hemby was like the only one people like weren't sure who was the fourth high woman yeah. and whatever and they sang it wasn't god who made honky tonk angels which was like originally written by or performed by kitty wells and then uh loretta ling recorded with dolly and tammy mm-hmm. which i think is a perfect fit for the high women's like first. oh yeah song to play um it was great so before they put out their full self-titled album they played newport folk festival which was like their true debut performance as the high women playing their songs i wasn't there but like trust me that i've watched every video same (laughs) from it and seen every photo and like (laughs) screamed about it and all you know like got real excited so they stepped out in all customized manuel suits just Brandy Carlisle, we already talked about it, the style, but like, <laughs> God, that suit, the rhinestones, the so whole. So good. It's beautiful. They were singing at Newport Folk Festival. It was a big deal because there's like a lot of hype around this project because it's like for the coolest women doing things right now. And Dolly Parton came out and sang with them. So crazy. Which I think like, dr- like people were like, oh, we're taking these people really seriously. Like, yeah. and Dolly is like backing them like right. that was cool and there's like an amazing picture of like dolly walking out on the stage and brandy just like smiling so (gasps) big and i'm like she's like living her dreams like i love it it's so um so good yeah it was very cool so then in september they released their like full record they had a couple songs out and it's really good i i really like this record i think my only thing my personal opinion about it was that i feel like some of the songs might have lived better on like a solo record but i mean that's totally my personal yeah opinion um like i'm like the one song in a cocktail is like it's such a mm-hmm. good song about like amanda shire's father but i'm like i almost wish it was like just her and a fiddle singing or something but yeah um anyway so they kind of like wrote all these songs uh i think a lot of them individually a few of them together and kind of picked like what fits this message we want to send mm-hmm. and I feel like I want to hear your, like, take on this, of, like, yeah. The High Women as an album is more of, like, a like a message, like, a yeah. movement, an experiment, than just, like, a record. Like, they're more than the sum of their parts as artists with oh, The High Women. for yeah. sure. I think it was a very intensely thought-out album in terms of, I mean, the whole 
thing of the high women is it's a movement more than a band or an album or anything so I think they were very intentional about what songs they wanted to put on there and the messages behind it I mean if you think about crowded table I mean that's a pretty clear message of like hey we're all in this together we're all accepting of each other like let's build bridges and yeah which is a song it's a song on the album which is kind of talking about how there's like like in anything women do it's like competition like there can only be one woman and country radio is like if you listen to last episode like the worst at that and this like (laughs) song is like like i want to sit at a crowded table like the more the better like let's get all these women like let's give them a platform and let's Mm -hmm. like do it so yeah that's like an example yeah um and like redesigning women which is just i love that song so much and it is pretty much just the epitome of like hey we're women we're more than just your stereotypical ideas of what women are we do everything and we're all in this together as well and i loved in their video for that they brought in so many other amazing yeah yeah, like lily hyatt was in there i think cam was in it so many people are just like hanging out with each other tanya (laughs) yeah freaking tanya tucker on a four-wheeler but she was in that video it was amazing like if i could be in that field just like that's like my dream party i hope when i I die and if i go to heaven that's what it's like on a tractor hanging out with brandy oh my god these other cool women at a bonfire that's the dream really that is the dream (laughs) um yeah so there's just like a lot of songs the the like title track song Song, um the high women she brandy carlisle sat down with jimmy webb who wrote the highway men song mm-hmm. and she rewrote the song with him about instead of highway men about women who died in protests throughout history like that's it's that's brilliant. a perspective you're not getting in, no. in really a lot of music in general no. like there's a a disconnect i guess to like history a lot of times and I don't know. I think that's a really important perspective. They had Yola come in and sing from the perspective of a woman in the Freedom Riders movement, yeah. which I think is super cool. That's one of my favorite. Like, I have a ton of books on that. Um, yeah, it's cool. They they really threw out a message. And then there's also, like, they made, like, which if you listen to the playlist I made last time, there's, like, a ton of gay country or queer country. But mm-hmm. they made, like, an amazing gay country song, like, called If She Ever Leaves Me about, yes. like, this guy is hitting on, <sighs> so good. Her, like, her girl in the bar. And she's like, if she ever leaves me, it won't be for you. Like, she, yes. like, my favorite lyric is, like, too much cologne she prefers perfume or something like that and i'm yes. like that's such a good way to be like hey dude like, i know uh, it's so she's gay <laughs> brilliantly written and also just the way she says it you just you're just like yes yes <laughs> yeah it's uh it's it's really genius yeah the writing on this like someone like amanda shires and Bra- i just would love to be in a room like with them talking yeah. about like seeing their creative process because i think they're both like really zany creative yeah. people but the like the way they put words on a page like god it's uh fantastic i love just thinking about the dynamics between their personalities because I've been around them just very tiny bit um, in random events and stuff, and I, they all are so cool, eh? <laughs> just cool <Literally>. people. <laughs> but also, they all have such distinctive personalities and and styles of music, too. The fact that they are able to mesh those things together in a way that doesn't like lessen any one of their talents yeah, it, it really it, like it elevates it yeah, yeah. it is interesting it's, it's really interesting all four of them are from from very different corners of the industry yeah. like Marin is definitely the most pop i think amanda is like very very americana like what we consider americana now mm-hmm. natalie himby is like a hit country songwriter brandy as we've talked about has her thing and yeah to like mesh that into a sound when i think about that it makes me appreciate the album like even more Mm because i'm like they made this like fantastic country album and so also this album is sort of like an experiment for country radio which brandy has talked about a lot where this album got to number one on like the billboard country charts like uh like after it was released but radio 
you know, you're not going to hear if she ever leaves me yeah. on country radio. <laughs> yeah. And uh, to me, that's crazy because mm-hmm. a big argument that anonymous people on Twitter and actual industry people have said to me and all of us and other people and i'm sure Lori times 10 is like (laughs) oh well like we only Uh, we're only into like classic country or like real country and these songs are like loretta lynn could have written them like they're about being a yes like there's one like today i can't be mama that's not the actual title but something like that where it's like a it's a jokey song about like i don't want to be mom today i'm gonna like peel out of the driveway see it like that's classic country it's classic like Loretta, Tammy, like attitude and honesty yeah. are the two biggest things. If you look back to like what you call traditional country, a lot of people just want to say like, oh, well, those were the people who did it first. So that's traditional country and you can't get past that. But, but it's not about who the person no. is. It's about, yeah. And, and the whole point of, you know, like Dolly being there to support them shows there's an evolution of country that's always going to happen. It's never going to stay exactly the same. But if you're taking those pieces of, you know, what traditional country was or or what people think it is and using it in a different way or just evolving it, that's, I mean, that's country music in a nutshell. Oh, yeah. So. I mean, that's <laughs> Ken Burns' country music. The whole documentary is literally reiterating. Yeah the fact like country music is like the cyclical thing yes. like it's not it is it has been changing since like hank williams who's like one of the first like country doing air quotes yeah artists whatever like he was changing country what you know like mm-hmm. it's been happening since like a very for a very yes. very long time <laughs> so anyway i just don't it's an excuse to like, no. not play songs like this on the radio because it's like too edgy or what you know whatever yeah there's it's that's dumb there's so many i mean I could talk about country radio for like forever. That's why I had to limit myself. <laughs> I know I came we can't. Here alone, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, crew, I'm good oh, no. mad. I'm gonna talk <laughs> in this microphone, but it worked." Like, yeah, so. no, I mean, there's so many issues with that, but it's it's a good example. Like that and Casey Musgraves' Golden Hour are two prime mm, examples yeah. of country that people love and accept as is being, getting grammys and awards yeah, and and you know people love it the streaming numbers are there the people are buying the tickets to see the shows but the gatekeepers at radio are just like no i'm not gonna pay attention to it because we not don't want today to. yeah and that's pretty much why i'm mad on twitter all the time <laughs> same yeah so the high women also i think a lot of people who maybe are more into like folk or bluegrass or americana and stuff even latched on to like people i know Mm -hmm. that aren't like super into classic country even like this album like there's a song everyone can relate to if you're like a gay woman there's a song for you if you're a mom if you like have a father a relationship with your father that song will touch you like it it like covers all the bases it's a great album another record she did while she's doing all this other cool stuff so delta dawn by tanya tucker is like brandy carlisle's favorite country song of all time she said on uh many occasions and so she tanya tucker there's another article by marissa moss very recently where she profiled yeah and it was it was a great article Shout out but to marissa. Um, yeah <laughs> she i feel like all of my research for the past <laughs> two episodes has been like literally all her yeah. it's like amazing <laughs> But that article, they kind of talk about how Tanya Tucker was considered washed up, whereas, like, older men country stars are mm-hmm. considered, like, traditional legends where women, like, don't get that. Like, they, yep. other than, like, Loretta Lynn, who do you know that's, like, an older, like, woman country artist? That's, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, like, a double standard. Um, So, Tanya Tucker... I think Brandy Carla like saw something there, knew she had a dinner, kind of wanted her to like do this redemption arc thing, and it it like worked. And anyway, so she and Shooter Jennings produced her most recent record that came out last year called "While I'm Living," and um, it's like an amazing record. It uh, a couple so weeks good. ago won Best Country Album, and the song "Bring My Flowers Now" won Best Country Song at the Grammys. 
no big deal so yeah yeah i mean that's like and that was like i think that was like her first grammy one and yeah. she's 61 years old so that's like and she was first nominated 50 years before that's for crazy. a grammy yeah she was very young when she, she started four, out 14 i yeah, think she was when like she the was youngest nominated. singer i think she was like 13 she was like the youngest yeah. like female singer ever signed to a major record label at yeah. the time which is it's wild crazy she's probably still one of the youngest like I mean, I hope they're not just throwing out record deals to 13-year-olds, but... Um, <laughs> right. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of things we could get into that we should not. But what Brandy kind of did here, which also kind of shows how genius she is of an artist slash, like, how much of a figurehead for this whole thing we're talking about all the time, is, like, she, like reached out to Tanya and kind of, like, with the Hansroth twins, like, helped write these songs that mm-hmm. I think she maybe had some of the ideas and they kind of wrote with her, but they, like, wrote a lot of these songs for her and it's, like, how did Brandy Carlisle s- write these songs from Tanya's perspective? I don't know. It's cra- It's, like, she, like, <laughs> went in her brain, like, the yeah. song Bring My Flowers Now, which won the Grammy, which is, like, probably the standout track of the record, even though it's, like, a really, really good record. Um, you know, bring my flowers now. Like, it, it, you know, everyone talks about that. Like, don't like thank someone when they're dead or right. when they're like, you know, out. Like, let's like do it now. And it's like such a metaphor for Tan, what she did for Tana's career, and like I know. for her to just believe in her so much. Like, she still does. Like, she was on the High Women video mm-hmm. shoot, and she like is hanging out with her. And uh, man, that's just like you're. She's such a good person. Like, if you're doing that, you're I such know. a good human being. She's like the prime example of what i feel like everyone in the industry and as people really in general should be like she's the person that does all the stuff that we all say that we're gonna do and like try our best to do but she goes the extra mile and she reaches out to those people anyone that she thinks that she can help or you know the uplift or yeah platform, or yeah. just in any way and she just does it and she does not hold back on it i feel like when she puts herself into something she puts herself into it 150 percent. oh yeah and it comes out in everything she does i mean in all of her art and in, in the art that she helps with other people like tanya's record i mean she helps other artists get the better parts of themselves that oh, yeah. they don't even see or other people have told them not to see you know yeah. like someone she's like, like Tanya. digging something out yeah. that's there that she knows like yeah. she's she's like visionary mm-hmm. i mean that's that's like amazing and she i mean yeah she does put so much effort she puts so much effort in everything she does in this album is like yeah. an example like she just went full force and was like we're gonna produce a tanya tucker album in 2019 yeah and they were nominated for four Grammys, and then she, like, they won, too. Like, that's... It's crazy. Uh, yeah, and it's also <laughs> just a great album. And yeah. I, um... Uh, after the Americana Awards, Tanya headlined third in Lindsley. It was a very late night. Um, <laughs> I, I, like, it was a very late night. But I I was, like, reviewing that show, which was exciting, because third in Lindsley is such, like, an intimate venue, and, like, yeah. not... A ton, like, I mean, it's pretty packed out, but it's still a smaller venue. I mean, compared to like the Ryman or, you know, something like that. And Tanya went on pretty late and she brought out, I think, two or three songs and brought out Brandy and the twins. Yeah. And then she's like, y'all just stay on stage. And Brandy, like, sang back up for Tanya Tucker the whole <gasps> I show. I love that. I know. It's I was so like, good. Brandy Carlisle is your backup singer right like what it was crazy it was so good though she just hung out and was like let's do this song let's do this one and brandy just sang back up the whole time and stayed on stage that's the thing that's another thing about her too is she's not afraid to like stand back and let other people take the spotlight like she loves that yeah. and that's why she makes the effort you might already you might be talking about this later but like of making herself open for smaller artists yeah which we can go into that was kind of the next point is she uh i think tanya is is a good example of that she's very and high women too where she like they all take turns being the lead singer or whatever um so she does do last year she which i have a really great quote so she did a couple shows where she opened for younger like women country americana artist and this is a really long quote so let me see how i can consolidate <laughs> this here actually i think i just want to read it it's very long but hillary hughes interviewed her in billboard about like why are you doing this like you're this uh 
it, I, I think a lot of people are intrigued. Like, you're this huge artist, but you're opening for other people. Like, they're not opening for you. And uh, this, is, this is cool, though. But she was like, like most social and societal problems, I discovered a problem by discovering that I am a part of the problem, usually, because I'm a bit simple in that way. It's just how I learn of there being issues by reflecting on it and realizing that I'm a part of the issue. I've certainly been guilty in the past of picking openers for shows or deciding who I'm going to open for or not open for based on what kind of numbers they have, how successful they are, and how it makes me look. This is in my distant past, my late 20s and early 30s. I was really concerned with that. It always kind of bothered me. I asked a person in the music industry if I could have this other woman that I won't name open for me at a gig because I loved her and I love her music. The response I got back was a sentence that's been with me for a really long time. It was a simple, she's not worth anything. <laughs> Ugh, yeah. Ugh. Um, and uh, then she continued, I know that he meant like in the market, she's not worth the number of tickets that you're depending on her to sell, those kinds of things. But just that line, it really stuck with me and it's been on my mind since I read it that somebody definitely said that about me in the past, that it's definitely been said or thought about me in the past. That's just something I've got to eradicate in my own career. I was thinking about how I announced my plan to take only women out on the road for a year, which is like another thing she did. She had women openers, which I've done for the past year, and I've now kind of completed that. But the language of it, I was like, I decided to take only women to support me on the road. Rolling that sense around in my mind to support me, to support me, to support me. I was like, I wonder if I can set all that ranking competition aside and just actively support some of the women I admire just because I admire them, not because they're playing in a big place or because it serves me in my career, but because I want to. So I just reached out and asked a few of my favorite songwriters. Hell yeah. That's it. That's (laughs) like, that was a very long quote, but that's it. Like she, so Courtney Marie Andrews, I think was the first one. She was like, can I open for you on this, like, show you're playing? And that is, like, putting your money where your mouth is. That is, like, doing an action to where, like, that where she was like, I want to support them. And to literally support them on a show, oh, my God. Yeah. That's amazing. And she did it for Lucy Silva's, Mm -hmm. too. And I'm sure that's probably a thing she'll continue. I mean, that was only very recently, the past few months. That is so cool. Who else is doing that? No one. That's That's, crazy. That's the thing. And... That's one of the parts, too, that I think a lot of people don't realize is all of the, like, mess behind the scenes in terms of booking people, and this goes into, like, festival lineups and everything, too, but there's always the argument of, oh, well, like, maybe these female artists are not worth the amount that they're charging for us to book them, or they're not going to get the same amount of... people to come to the show because they're not as popular and that's why we have more male artists on the lineup blah 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 and that's just not real it's, it's just literally not, not. it's and that, not real that's a thing i mean i as far as like shows and stuff i have more experience than diy space but it's literally from diy to like giant headlining festivals that is like a thing yeah oh it's where a huge thing. women are either booked as like a token mm-hmm. to make sure it's not like an all white dude lineup yep. uh which like is a thing people should not do anymore locally if you're still doing that that sucks yeah um but <laughs> in a bigger thing yeah like shows and tours like that that's literally the excuse people yeah people give which is so ridiculous which goes into the last point i had here which is Another thing she does to change the status quo <laughs> is uh, women on festival lineups is a problem. You should go to Book More Women is, like, this uh, website, social accounts that, like, they do they do a ton of stuff. Their biggest thing, I think, visually is they take festival lineups and just remove every artist who isn't either a band with a woman in it or a woman or non-binary person and it's usually like three artists are left yeah. on the lineup. It is very blank. Um, men make up 67% of music festival lineups, and that doesn't count bands that are like men with a woman in it. So that's just like solo men artists or bands with all men are 67% of all festival lineups. Yeah. And that's including all festival lineups. So the ones that make an effort, you know, I feel like if you took like just the big, you know, Coachella, Bonnaroo, all that mm-hmm. stuff, it would probably be an even bigger statistic. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's like this year, Lizzo's the first woman to headline Bonnaroo in like some crazy number of years. Yeah, which is ridiculous. It's crazy. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. a problem. 
And I'm glad people are getting woke to it, I guess. In country, it seems to be a little bit bigger of a problem for all the same reasons we talked about last time on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, But Brandi Carlisle was like, okay, well, I don't want to go to a festival with a bunch of men in it, so I'm going to make my own. So, in 2019, she started Girls Just Want a Weekend. She did it this year, too. It was, like, last weekend. Yeah. And it's just an, a festival with a completely women lineup. And yeah. it is, like, beautiful because I think also she encourages, like, collaboration. Like, yeah. every video I've seen is, like, ten people on stage oh, crowd yeah. surfing. and They're all just hanging out and, like, having the time of their lives, it looks like. I am Gets very, in Mexico. I'm I would very, love to. <laughs> yeah, and it's I'm also in if Mexico. If to fund me and Lori. <laughs> yes. Going to the sex. Um, uh, I will deluxe tell you my Venmo yeah, account. Literally. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but it looks amazing. And I've, she's just curated this sense of community, which is, I feel like what she does in a nutshell, like it's what she does yeah, with the high with women, yeah. with her shows, is a sense of community and everyone belongs here. And even though we are people that are ignored or put down or just, you know, told you're not enough most of the time that you have a place and she's yeah. making those places for people whether it's a stage or you know a place to go record or just like making that for the listener to anyone who's listening and is just like I feel like I don't belong that's what her music helps oh, yeah. create sure. a space for you where you feel like you belong and that's a huge deal and I think what she did with this festival is so cool because again she just decided she was going to go do it and she did it she didn't let any of that crap about oh well like they won't draw enough people it's like well how many people have gone to this festival yeah like i think it was like sold out like a, <laughs> yeah. a ton of people want to see lot. it all went that's it. i would rather see that yeah. than any other festival so. i i just want someone tweeted this at me yesterday <laughs> Jesus. I hate to say that, but <laughs> someone tweeted that they wanted to see, like, an alt-country Lilith Fair, which is, like, my dream. Oh, my God. If we oh, could have, amazing. like, a all-women, non-binary Woodstock curated by Brandy Carlisle. Brandy, Brandy, if you're listening, if you're listening please, please, <laughs> we need please. you. Well, Lilith Fair is right up her alley, though, because also, like we talked about Inigo Girls. Yeah. Her one of her songs. She's, like, friends with them now, and that was, like, one of, she used to camp out at their shows. Yeah. So she has this whole cool 90s alt-rock, P&W, Seattle rock background. Okay, I think we need to bring the sensibilities yeah. of, like, 90s rock for women into okay that's a great idea yeah i agree and yes. actually Old country little affair let's well, make it happen yes when i saw brandy play the ryman a few weeks ago natalie hemby was opening for her and she said her new album which was produced by brothers osborne which is oh, really cool amazing. is gonna be like 90s alt girl rock oh i love and that. i'm so excited yeah i and mean yeah i listen to manzi star like once again, yeah so that's like right it's everything alley. that i've ever wanted oh, that's amazing <laughs> so Man, that's yeah that's great yeah i think that's beautifully put what you said about like her making a space because she did that's how i feel when i listen yeah. to her music like if i'm I, if i feel like we all do like things are hard or you you're still working real hard on carving a space like there's this like space for you there in like mm-hmm. indulging in her art which is what good art should do it shouldn't just make you feel something it should like it should create uh, like a haven for you in a way yeah yeah i think that's beautiful yeah so i guess i guess that's pretty much it um yeah i I mean i feel like i could we could talk about her forever but (laughs) But, um, you guys would hate us after a while (laughs) um so in conclusion listen to by the way i forgive you and listen to all her other stuff. Listen to the Dolly Parton cover of her own song. Yes. Listen to the High Women. Go see Brandy Carlisle, please. Just please. do it. Just do it. <laughs> if you're going to a festival and she's there, like just make a little detour. If you can get tickets, like she's amazing live. It'll make you transcend and feel things. <laughs> yes. One thing I want to mention, she yeah. produced the Secret Sisters album, yes. which is coming out probably the same week this episode will come out on February 28th. Yeah. But anyway, you should listen to that. She like produces people's records in her home studio that she cares about. Anyway, Brandy Carlisle is 
incredible. She's important. I think that we talked about all the issues in the last one, and this mm-hmm. is, like, someone who's an example of a solution, of, yes. like, pragmatic approach to solving an issue that's been going on for so long that you just gotta, like, quit asking for approval mm-hmm. and go for it. And I hope we can all emanate that energy into 2020 and beyond. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Well, thank you for being on the podcast. <laughs> thank you for having me. And thank you guys for listening.